good. That's really good. Now, you want to introduce your pastor that's going to be here next time? Larry? Oh, okay. <laughs> As I said, this will be Brother Gary's last day to preach here at Brotherage. He will sort of be missed, but we have talked to Mr. Nathan Shaw. And he Ginger. will be going to preach here and his family, Priscilla and Samuel and Sarah and, and the mother. So come back and we will continue to worship Jesus Christ. Amen. I see several people here from Olive Branch and several yeah. people from hey. Newcastle. Thank you all for coming and bringing us preachers. It's a we love you, Brother Gary. Well, we need to feel loved, and I love you. Daddy, we had another preacher walk in that didn't get uh, recognized and introduced earlier. Brother Where is it? Brother Wallace. Wallace. Is here. Yeah, Brother Wallace at, at Olive Branch. Wallace both of us. I didn't know that he hadn't been introduced. Now he hasn't been. <laughs> All right. This is bittersweet for me. I began to look when I when I decided this that I was going to be leaving. Uh, I, I said I'd look and see how long I've been here, and uh, I was I was really shocked. I I didn't realize this is going to make me three years here. I began to look back at the pages where I keep a record of all my sermons. And I got two years of passion and I was still there on the first and third Sunday. I was grew up raised and I realized that this Sunday would make me three years here as, as minister. And so I've enjoyed it. But the time has come, folks. Uh, my, my body and my mind uh, it deteriorated to the point that I, I can't do it anymore. And I wish I could. I've, I've had to quit taking funerals and weddings and uh, everything else. I can't, I can't, I'm in no shape to go visit in the hospital because I can't make the walk. So uh, I just no longer am worth anything to you, tell you the truth. But you're going to be better off. Uh, Brother Nathan's a good preacher and a good man. Amen. He's, he's helped me here before we preached a revival for us last year. And uh, he's preached for me several times when I couldn't be here. And uh, I know you're in good hands. He'll preach the word to you. Amen. And uh, Amen. I'm glad for him to be here today to be first to introduce him. My scripture today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter number 8. And we'll begin reading with verse 1. <clears throat> and the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs. So the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house and into your bedroom, on your bed and into the houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens and into your kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up on you, on your people and on all your servants. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand over the, and with your rod over the streams and over the rivers and over the ponds and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, 
entreat the Lord uh, that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, uh, accept the honor of saying, when do you want me to have the frogs to, to leave? And for your people to destroy the frogs from you and your houses that they may remain in the rivers only. So he said, tomorrow. And he said, let it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. I'm sure you're familiar with this Exodus account, the plague of frogs and lice and flies and locusts and darkness. Now these are little despicable animals, yet by their vast numbers they can become quite a nuisance, even a plague. God could have used lions or bears and wolves and tigers, but he chose to use the small to magnify his own power, for he is Lord over all, even the animals. Yes. The beast of the field, the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air. He is Lord over all. Yes. I believe God's power is manifest as much in the creation of the ant as it is the elephant. But the subject we deal with today is fraud. Can you imagine knowing that tomorrow when you get up, the frogs will still be with you? Frogs everywhere. You open the dresser to get out your clothes and there are frogs in your closet and you turn down the cover on the bed tonight. Frogs, frogs in your house shoes, frogs on the floor. Frogs in every room. You can't get away from the frogs. In the morning, you go to the kitchen to prepare breakfast, and guess what? Frogs in the flour, frogs in the sugar, frogs in the coffee, frogs in the stove, frogs in the refrigerator, frogs in the sink, frogs in the jelly, frogs on the table, frogs in every chair, everywhere you look, inside the house and outside the house, in the car, in the pickup truck, in the barn, everywhere you turn, the frogs. I mean, big frogs, little frogs. Tree frogs, toad frogs, brown frogs, green frogs, 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 and more frogs. Bull frogs. <laughs> and that's what happened to Pharaoh when he refused to let the children of Israel go back to their homeland. Verse 3, the Nile will team up with frogs. They will come up into your palace and in your bedroom and into your bed and into the house of your officials and on your people and into your ovens and into your kneading trough. When Moses told Aaron to stretch his staff over the streams and canals and the ponds, God made the frogs to come forth everywhere. Come on in, folks, and y'all scoot up together close let some people in. The magicians wanted to show they had the same power, and so they had, they made even more frogs come upon the land. Pharaoh had a double whammy. So Pharaoh sent for Moses to get rid of these frogs. And Moses asked Pharaoh, when do you want me to ask God to take the frogs away? And Pharaoh, the big dummy, said, <laughs> Tomorrow. He said, He said, Tomorrow. Now I want to ask a question here. Why spend one more night with the frog? <laughs> Was Pharaoh so fond of these little critters that he wanted them to stay another night? Why not get rid of these pesky frogs right now? I mean, immediately. He was asked, when he wanted to get rid of them? I know this is an unusual sermon. And this, <laughs> this sermon may cause you to croak, or it could keep you hopping, I don't know. But why spend one more night with the frogs? He might have supposed they would just go away by themselves and if the frogs just decided to return to the rivers on their own, then Pharaoh would not feel obligated to God for removing the pest from his life. 
Maybe you thought good another night, another night. Maybe it'll go back to the water. Maybe we're sometimes like that. We don't want to feel obligated to God. We think the pest of this world will just go away on their own, but they won't. There are people everywhere who are dissatisfied with their life. They are plagued with the sin of their life and the problems of everyday life seems like millions of frogs. We admit that Jesus can give us abundant life and I think most of us really believe that. Yet when I ask, when will you give your life to Christ? People will still say, well, not now. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe next revival, next time. Sometime in the future they want to be saved, but not now. People say, well, I'm going to get saved before I die. I'm going to ask you something. When are you going to die? Anybody know? Of course not. Listen to me. There is no wholesale price or blue light special on salvation. Amen. So why spend one more night with the frogs? Why spend one more day in your sin? Why risk one more hour of your life without accepting Jesus as your Savior? You may think your sins will just go away on their own or that God will somehow forget, but He won't. Numbers 32, 23 says, Be sure your sins will find you out. We sometimes think tomorrow will be different, better, a new day for a new person, but without Jesus, you'll be the same person you who spent last night with the frog. You can add everything else you think you need in your life and yet still live with frogs. A new home, a new car, a better job, a bigger bank account, but your life is still filled with frogs. And when asked, when will you give your life to Jesus Christ, you still say, tomorrow. I'm just not ready yet. Why do we want to spend one more night, one more week, one more year in our sin when Jesus is willing to forgive us right now and to wash our sins away and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God was perfectly willing to take away the frogs the day Pharaoh was approached by Moses. But Pharaoh said, well, tomorrow, let me live one more night with these frogs. Now, God doesn't want to plague you. God would much rather bless you. God doesn't want anything for you except what's good for you. He really does love you. God cares about you. Yet so often we say, let me live in my sin one more night. I, I want to get drunk one more time. Let me have one more high on these drugs. Let, let me have one more adulterous affair. I have, I have to tell one more lie to make money on this particular deal I'm dealing with. I want to continue just like I am right now. I, I'm getting used to all this misery. Let me spend one more night with these frogs. Why? Why? Why will you do it? Why will you settle for frogs and lice and flies and locusts and darkness when you can be rid of these pests right now? Amen. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as the snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Do you remember what happened? Pharaoh's heart was hardened. You keep saying, no, your heart will be hardened. And, and finally you'll get to the point you don't even hear the voice of God anymore. Right. Every day he lingered, he received more plagues, and finally the plague of the death of the firstborn, and he had a son to die. I sometimes wonder what it will take to get some people's attention. Financial difficulties, sickness in the family, a failure in business, death of a son or daughter, spouse, someone you love. I wonder what it will take to cause people who are lost to turn to God. The way of sin is a downward way. It's like living with frogs. And the pest will worry you. But when asked, when will you repent of your sins? And when will you turn to God? You say, tomorrow. Why not right now? Make up your mind to not be bothered with the devil's frogs any longer. Right now for all time and eternity, turn your life over to Jesus Christ. 
I'm talking to people not only here at Grub Ridge today, but people who are online and Facebook, people who will see this on YouTube. Let me ask you this question. Why spend one more night with the frogs? You may be somebody I'm talking to that won't hear this for time, a time, but you'll hear it, you'll see it. Let this be your prayer. I'm sick and tired of sin. I'm tired of living with these frogs in my life. I won't wait till tomorrow, but right now, Jesus, I need you. Save me now, else I perish. I trust that is your desire. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said, Them that come to Me, I will in no wise cast out. And whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. God loves you. He really does. Jesus died for you. He wants to take away your sin. He wants to take away the frogs in your life. Will you trust Him to do that? I trust that you will.